Hello friends, I'm Abby and today I am going to be introducing you to this newest reading vlog. In this vlog, <laughs> I am in the process of moving, so I'm filming this after I have filmed the vlog. We have moved, we are in our new home, but there are a ton of boxes and a ton of days where I just didn't read a whole lot and I didn't update you, <laughs> so sorry. I also didn't read as much as I was planning on reading, which is why I'm refilming this intro. I filmed it with the intention to read five books for this vlog, but with the move and with life, it just didn't happen. So I'm gonna tell you about the three books that I did read. So I read After the Flood by Cassandra Montag, and this book is a climate change dystopia novel that takes place years after what's called the Great Flood, where uh, the ocean waters have risen and have kind of taken over the earth, and now there is only water for the most part, except for what was the really tall mountains are now the only places for land. So ultimately in this book, we're following this woman, Myra, who is a mother at the beginning of this novel to a young girl named Pearl. And you find out at the beginning of this novel that during the beginning of this flood that happened six years prior, her daughter, her other daughter, was stolen from her. Then I read The Electric Kingdom by David Arnold, and this is a young adult sci-fi dystopia novel that incorporates more sci-fi elements than a typical dystopia novel, although it reads very much like a classic dystopia. And it's all about this girl who is living in this dystopian world after this fly flu has gone through and killed most of the population. In this world, this girl is being sent on this mission by her dad to find a portal that essentially can open up to different dimensions or something like that. And that is kind of her journey is going on this exploration, finding people along the way. She's out in the wilderness, very dystopia vibes with an added element of time travel. And then the third book I read was The Pull of the Stars by Emma Donahue. And this is a historical fiction dystopia pandemic story about Ireland, Dublin, Ireland during the Great Flu in 1918. And it specifically takes place at a maternity ward in a hospital that is super overrun because of the flu. And these women in the maternity ward are super high risk because they are pregnant and it specifically takes place in the kind of um, overflow maternity ward. So just very interesting perspectives taken in this book. So those are the three books I plan on reading. And like I said, I'm filming this at the very end. So I'm just gonna let you get right on into the first book that I read and see what my thoughts are about it. I am on my way to rehearsal, but I wanted to update you that I I am 100 pages into After the Flood by Cassandra Montag, and I'm loving it. This book is reading like poetry, and the author has previously written like nature poetry, so it's definitely very interesting and um, very lyrical writing, which is something that I love when reading like dystopian novels because it really makes you get sucked into the world of what's going on and the natural aspect of especially this story where the post-apocalyptic aspects of it are due to like a climate situation just very very interesting the writing is great and i think myra is so realistic as a character and so relatable because she is really just trying to do what's best for pearl and this mission that she's on is basically putting up all these ethical questions like who do you trust and is it worth finding the daughter that was taken from her if she's risking the life of the daughter that she has now especially in this world where people lose each other all the time like there are so many children without parents and parents without their children that she's really grappling with this idea of is it worth it to go save her other daughter just really fascinating things and the lyrical writing about nature is so good it just makes me feel connected to this world and really want to know what led to this flood I, 
this like four year flood, I think or six year flood that basically flooded the world. And the entire world is now in the society of people who are living on boats or are crowding into colonies on these lands, but there's only a little bit of land left. So it really is just a fascinating concept, especially with water levels rising and things like that. Just a really interesting dystopian or post-apocalyptic idea. And in the first 100 pages, it has really been an adventure. And I love the writing style just in the way it goes right into the action where it's already post-apocalyptic when the story starts and it slowly throughout the first 100 pages gives you backstory not even a whole lot we still haven't gotten the full explanation but it's giving you bits and pieces of backstory about what led to this great flood what led to this war that they keep hinting at that had happened and led to her husband taking her daughter away unexpectedly in the middle of this flood just really really great writing really really interesting story and i can't wait to keep reading it but for now i'm gonna go and have rehearsal work it is a beautiful beautiful day out today so I'm gonna go take a walk I'm gonna go listen to some more of the audiobook for after the flood but I wanted to update you on where I'm at so I've reached about halfway through the book and I'm loving it it's truly unlike what I expected it's reading more like a fantasy or like a literary fiction rather than like a post-apocalyptic end of the world pandemic story. Now there are very interesting elements of that included in this, such as like in the past 100 pages, we've gotten a little more discussion on how biological warfare was used during this six year flood that destroyed the world and how people are trying to rebuild communities. And you have some people who are trying to start these communities in very unhealthy and from what my perspective is and the characters in this book perspective they see it as immoral so for example there are these breeding ships where they take young girls when they find them and essentially are trapping them as slaves and forcing them to have children and there are communities full of slaves where people are taking people who have survived this flood and this climate disaster and are forcing them into jobs and the main like antagonist group of this book is the lily black and the lily black is this ship a raider ship that travels around and it's basically a big group of pirates like that's kind of the vibe of these people and these raiders are finding people and kind of putting them onto different ships as slaves so very interesting adding a really interesting dynamic but overall this book is essentially just like a sea story like it's a story set at sea they're on this ship and in the past 100 pages they have joined this crew of people who are all traveling to the same destination as the main character Myra who wants to find her daughter and so she joins the ship and is the fisher for that ship because this is kind of what she's known for is being a fish trader because she's really really good at fishing so super interesting I love Pearl Pearl is just like a sassy little girl character it but she loves snakes <laughs> I just love her so Pearl in this book she was born after the six year flood had basically like reached its peak. So Myra keeps talking about how she's remembering bubble baths and she's remembering all of these wonderful things that she grew up loving in her childhood that Pearl will never get to experience. And when she mentions like a library to Pearl, Pearl is like, why would I want to go do learning there? Like, why wouldn't I just do learning on this ship? Like, <laughs> It's so fascinating to read a book that's set in like a post-apocalyptic world where society is already being rebuilt. Normally these books are set in a time where you're seeing them rebuild, but this book is essentially set in a time where everyone has already started rebuilding and this group in the book on this ship that they're on called Sedna, they want to build a community of people that is kind of like a communal living community really really interesting there's also some romance going on in this 
really beautifully done and it's just delving deep into character struggles and human struggles of what changes when you're in an apocalypse when the world as you've known it for most of your life has ended and kind of what you do to move on i'm just loving it the discussions in this are great the light writing is fantastic and i'm so eager to continue reading it today and see where the story takes you because there's definitely been some twists and turns in the last 100 150 pages okay so i just reached page 300 of after the flood and it is so good i don't really have anything to add other than it's definitely not like a dystopian like post-apocalyptic novel like i expected it to be and like i'm reading it for this vlog for um but it is lovely and a beautiful gorgeous story and i'm truly truly loving it i'm probably gonna finish it tonight so i'm gonna go keep reading at page 300 things have just kind of gotten crazy they've gotten intense and there's a lot of like ship and political dialogue going on like a lot of discussion about like running a ship and family in this time of chaos and how everyone lost somebody during this flood and during this apocalypse and kind of how we can rebuild after something so traumatic like that and i think that, that is a very relevant idea in our world right now where we're coming right out of a pandemic it's just very relevant to this concept that in the book of you know who's important to you what is important to you and making time for that i just think that that is such a beautiful message and it's also such a beautiful story about taking care of what's important so i'm gonna go finish this book okay i finished after the flood by cassandra montag and i love this book i think i'm gonna give it four four and a half stars it almost had that full five star feeling for me I really, really loved this book. I think what lost that like little extra something for me was the convenience of the end of the book. So about 50 pages before the end, I started to wonder how are we possibly going to wrap this book up in 50 pages? I just did not see how we were going to solve all of these like wrap ups in that short amount of time. And in the end, I think the way it wrapped up was very convenient. It was very too good to be true at some points. Like there were just moments where I thought it was very unrealistic. But overall, I thought that the progression of the love story in this was amazing. I loved the characters and so I felt invested in their relationship. But ultimately, I think this book is going to come down to whether or not you resonate with the characters and with the messages in this book about motherhood and about family, as well as kind of viewing this book not so much as a dystopian, but almost more of a traveling story, a story about motherhood and what it means to be a good mother, as well as almost like an old timey tale like this book is definitely a dystopian it's taking place in a time after this major flood happened due to climate the climate change but there are a ton of old illnesses resurfacing like the plague there are definitely moments of um travel that are mentioned in this where people are relating it to the oregon trail where people died in like mass traveling groups um, because there just wasn't enough food and people didn't have enough resources people got sick there weren't medical supplies so this is a very interesting blend of different genres so if you're looking for something sort of out of the ordinary in terms of a dystopian novel i do highly recommend this but ultimately it was set on the ship had fantastic characters and if it sounds like something that you would like I highly recommend it because the writing was also incredibly fantastic. So I loved this one. Next, I picked up The Electric Kingdom and I am currently reading this. I am a little over 100 pages in. I'm at like 110 and I'm really hooked. It's unlike After the Flood. It's unlike anything I've really read before. This book is all about society after this fly flu happens and so it's these flies that I thought it was like 
a plague, which it kind of is, but it's also like swarms of flies that will literally devour you. Like it's not just the flu they're carrying you have to be afraid of, it's the actual swarms of flies. So it definitely is reading kind of bird boxy as well. Kind of like a terrifying pandemic creature based horror novel, but mostly sci-fi. I think it's marked, yeah, it's marked as sci-fi from the library. And I think it definitely earns that sci-fi distinction as opposed to just a classic dystopia which are also technically science fiction. But the science fiction part of this book is coming through because Nico is in search of this portal that her dad was working on discovering at the beginning of this fly flu pandemic or epidemic. So that's very interesting element. And it seems already in chapter one or like the prologue, we're getting some weird vibes. And then very early on, we're hearing some information about this portal and what the dad thinks it means. I really love the character so far. We have Nico, who's a young girl. I think she just turned 18 in this book and she is traveling on her own with her dog to find this portal that her dad sent her out to find. And she is born, both of the kids in this book are born after the end of society, after the fly flu has um, wiped out most of society. So they know conceptually of things like electricity and all of that stuff, but they've never experienced it. And so it's interesting watching her stumble upon like a road for the first time and like solar energy where electricity is still working. That's just really interesting. And the dynamic of a dog in this is interesting as well. I'm very apprehensive about it because I like the dog. And sometimes liking animals in books is not a good trap to fall into. But then we have Kit, who is the other perspective in this book. And Kit is a 12 year old boy who is living with his mother and kind of his found family in a little town. He calls it the town. And they live in a movie theater and they all kind of have their own thing, which his thing is art. And so he is painting the same picture every single day. Very interesting. He's an interesting kid. I don't know really what's going on yet. Um, I'm a little bit confused. And then we have a third perspective called the Deliverer. Again, a little bit confused, but the Deliverer seems to be a time traveler or like somebody who lives multiple lives. It's like resurrected or like reincarnated. I, this book is like wild so far. There's just a lot happening in the first 100 pages. So I'm really enjoying it. The writing style is fast paced. It's interesting. I want to know what's going to happen. The intrigue for me is super high. And so I am kind of just going to keep going along with this today, I think. Okay, I just reached page 200 of The Electric Kingdom and I'm really enjoying it. I love the voices of Nico and Kit. Kit is such an interesting character to me because he is a 12 year old boy who basically has taught himself everything from these books, but I think he's really funny. And even though it's young adult and the two main characters are an 18 year old girl and a 12 year old boy, the conversations they're having are so relevant to today and so adult. Like they just had a full conversation about art and how art is kind of the way that we immortalize ourselves as human beings and about the time loop that they believe might be happening. Like this idea that no matter how many different times the world restarts, it always ends the same way with like humans causing a flood or biologically engineering flies until they <laughs> destroy the world like it's just a really interesting concept and they're having really interesting and adult discussions but they are young it's reading more adult than I expected since the characters are so young I guess is what I'm trying to say I'm enjoying it not a whole lot has happened they're basically just traveling but at this point in the story Nico and Kit, who previously were completely separate stories, have kind of met up and we're seeing how their stories overlap. And so now halfway through the book, we are kind of seeing both of them in the same situation, but different perspectives, which before we were seeing them in completely separate situations, completely separate perspectives. 
the deliverer still very confusing. I don't mind them though. Guess we'll see what happens. Wow. <laughs> I finished the electric kingdom and I am equally satisfied and confused. I thought, so maybe like 30 pages before the ending, I was like, I think I'm going to be disappointed by the end. But then it got to the end and I wasn't disappointed. I actually really enjoyed it. I like the way it wrapped up because this book, without giving you any spoilers, plays with the idea of portals and science fiction, like time traveling, traveling to different dimension type things. And that can be really confusing, which is why my part of it is being confused. But I think by the end, I got it. I think I got it all. I definitely think for a young adult book, this is pretty advanced science fiction just because it took me a while to figure it out. Although I don't read a whole lot of science fiction, to be fair. But I think this book plays on this idea of like the butterfly effect and fate versus free will and whether things can be changed because obviously this book is set in a world where a pandemic has wiped out most of the earth. And so when time travel is discussed, it's brought up in a way of can any of us do anything to stop this from ever happening? And it's just a really fascinating concept. I think the characters in this were great, although I didn't have as emotional of a reaction to things that happened in this book as I expected to. And I don't think that that detracts from the book at all. I don't think it has anything to do with the writing. Although I do think the writing is maybe a little, it's like not super connect, like character connected. It's a little pulled back. It's a little like omniscient viewing from the outside rather than really building from the inside. But I loved these characters anyway. So this book, I don't know what I would rate it. I think I'm going with a four. But I definitely think I've seen lots of people give it a five star and I think it definitely is deserving of that. And I don't know if I will like eventually once I sleep on it and like dig into the ideas a little more how I'll feel if I'll bump my rating up. But overall, it was thoroughly enjoyable, written really, really well and had so many beautiful discussions. Also, my favorite scene in this book is when they are traveling. There's lots of traveling in this book to get to this portal that Nico is trying to reach and while they're traveling they go through this little town and they stumble upon this store that just says BAM and of course I know that it's a books a million and it turns into this like montage scene basically that's how I imagined it of these teenagers who have never lived in modern times exploring what a books a million has to offer and it was so wholesome and sweet it truly was really fantastic i also thought that there was a really good discussion about race and class in this that was unexpected and very very interesting and important and i love pandemic stories for that reason kind of end of the world stories for that reason because they take something that we as a society are struggling with or need to discuss further and adds in this kind of element of okay now add in that it's the end of the world and how is all of this affected like these issues are still important to discuss very very interesting but i think the next book i'm going to pick up is the pole of the stars by Anna, emma donahue and this is not a post-apocalyptic novel but is a novel set during a pandemic so it's set during the great flu and it is set in a birthing unit. So I think it will be super insightful. It's going to be really, really interesting. And this book is basically, there aren't chapters. There are only four, I guess, chapters, but four parts. And it's split up into four different colors that I think are very fascinating. And I need to know what they mean. But it's red, brown, blue, and black. I really want to get into this. And I know that it's not like a pandemic end of the world story, but it, or a post-apocalyptic end of the world story, but it is a pandemic story and I think that that applies to this kind of vibe reading vlog that I'm having. So I'm going to read this next and I'll let you know how I'm feeling. Okay I'm here for a reading update. I have read the first 90-ish pages of 
the poll of the stars, which is the entirety of part one. So, and I did find out in this first section why, well, kind of what the meaning behind those colors are, because this book is set during the time of the great flu in Dublin, Ireland, and a flu symptom type thing was when people have the flu and they are starting to like asphyxiate basically their faces will turn bright red and then they will start to turn like a dark brown color and then go to blue and then go to black so that is the significance of the colors of the parts of the book which i thought was interesting and just a fun fact that i didn't know the first 100 or so pages of this book i'm gonna put it down because there's no uh, cover on it right now but the first 100 pages have been very interesting it is basically one long like the first 95 pages or whatever were basically one long chapter there are no breaks and it's basically just a constant um explanation of what is going on with this nurse julia powers and nurse powers is in the maternity ward of this hospital during the great flu and she has three women who she's responsible for but the hospital is so overbooked and so understaffed and so many of their staff is sick with the great flu and people are dying left and right that she is the acting nurse she is the head nurse of the floor for the day and she's never been that before she is not a nun and a nun in this like hospital is considered to be the highest ranking nurse because they are considered closer to god in this time period and it's just very interesting to see nurse julia kind of grapple with this sudden responsibility of being the one making choices in addition to this it's set in a time period i believe 19 oh, 18 1918 so it's a time period where women did not make decisions she is the one making decisions all of the physicians and doctors in this book and at this this hospital are men and she's having to make decisions without consulting a man first and that is something she feels empowered by but it's definitely something that is unheard of and is only happening because of this pandemic they're going through the relations that i can make from what's going on in the book to the world that we're living in because although this book is set in 1918 and you know people are i'm seeing people do things that are not done nowadays. Um, I'm reading about maternity choices and what's going on in this maternity ward. And it all is very primitive from the perspective of somebody reading it in 2021. But it is very interesting seeing how they're coping with this great flu pandemic because they don't really know what's causing it. They don't know what might cure it. And it really reminded me, some of the discussions in this reminded me of wearing masks in the past couple of years. Because in this book, they discuss wearing masks. And some people are like, oh, well, I already had the flu, so I can't get it again. And I'm not going to wear a mask anymore. And then some people have beliefs that, like, they won't get it at all because they are praying about it. And then some people in 1918 are believing that if they eat only red foods that it'll keep the flu away. And it's just very fascinating to kind of explore the mindsets of these people who, you know, it's back before media was a thing and back before medical sciences were super advanced. But we're still dealing with a lot of those confusing and mis- informed people and opinions that I just think are really, really interesting. And of course, you know, getting multiple viewpoints of different people believing different things about these pandemics, just very interesting and insightful, especially reading it in this day and age, which I think is very intentional. But the book is pretty fast paced for being one long chapter. And I found myself really drawn to it and really caring about these characters and what happens to them. We have been introduced to a character that is, I'm still figuring out. I don't know what her real role is. And then there is a female doctor who is now on the scene. And we're definitely getting some male misogyny, like, 
angry men and but also empowered women but also really confused women who are like not happy about a female doctor being in the ward so just very interesting insights are being had in this book i plan to continue reading this today and hopefully i'll get to update you a little bit later i guess i will see you again when i've read more of the pull of the stars I just finished part two of The Pool of the Stars, so I just got through the brown chapter, and I told you guys the meanings behind the colors of the chapter headings, but I have now discovered that there are other meanings besides the um, overt meaning of the face and skin changing colors as you progress through this great flu. There are other meanings, and I think that's really cool that they're kind of snuck in there. Um, I also kind of just wanted to follow up on this um, idea of how the great flu situation compares to today's day and age. Um, and so this female doctor, she says, As for the authorities, I believe the pandemic will have run its course before they've agreed on any but the most feeble actions. And they're talking about how like the government and the authorities are all recommending a bunch of different things, all conflicting things. And the doctor is basically saying this pandemic will be over by the time anybody decides, anybody in power decides what we should be doing. I just think it's really interesting. Definitely gave me a little bit of a chuckle. Um, <laughs> I think it's very apropos to what we are going through. But also, this time period, there's a war going on. So there's the additional element on top of this great flu of there being a war going on. And the men of the country are, of many countries really, if all over Europe, are off fighting in the war. And many are not coming home at all. And Emma Donahue does a really good job of comparing this situation of the war to what women are going through in this maternity ward while giving birth and it's going to be way too complicated for me to explain that metaphor in this vlog but the metaphor comes through clearly in this section of the book in the brown section um dr dr what's her name dr lynn Dr. Lynn and Nurse Power are having a discussion about the female body and how it basically the woman's stomach growing and creating a child is like gearing them up for war and how the woman's body is like the, all of the resources are being taken and diverted to a child, which is very, very interesting. And then that kind of is compounded in this discussion that Julia, Nurse Julia, is having with herself about whether or not she wants to be a mother because at this time, in this day and age, especially in Ireland and especially in the church, it is greatly expected that you are to get married and have children. And Nurse Julia is kind of debating whether or not she wants that. She's about to turn 30 and she just doesn't know if that's the path that she wants, but she hasn't ever really stopped to consider what she wants and whether she wants children. It's just one of those things that's kind of expected. And I do think that that is a very, still a very relevant discussion to have. The society puts all this pressure on women to get married and have kids. And I just love the perspective we're getting in this book, especially with it being in relation to the middle of a pandemic during a time where childbirth was much more dangerous. Of course, it's still dangerous and women have complications constantly about this. And I just think that reading about it in this situation is really interesting and making me think about a lot of stuff. I'm really loving this book so far. I'm about halfway through, a little bit over. So I'm gonna keep reading um, and I'll update you when I finished the blue section. So I finished The Pole of the Stars by Emma Donahue. And this book took a turn that I just really didn't expect. So the tone of this book feels almost like you are going through a day as a nurse. It is very fast paced, it is very, like crisis to crisis, um, kind of direct and point blank. There's not a whole lot of flowery writing. It's much more direct and succinct and very 
here's what's happening, almost like you are living through this crisis moment by moment. And then it took this really sweet, deep character exploration, character dive that I just was not prepared for. And I absolutely loved it. So it took this moment with Nurse Julia and kind of gave her this like beautiful backstory and gave her character so much more depth than what we originally saw in the first two sections. The last two sections are just much more thorough and really explore her as a person rather than her as a nurse. And it really showed the experiences of people during this pandemic because they couldn't settle down and find happiness at the time. It was like constant running, constant stress. And especially during this time period, there were many people who were not allowed to find loved ones or to live alone, to pursue independence. It was just such a beautiful turn to the book that I didn't expect. And I think that the last two sections kind of completed this you know, the four sections are red, brown, blue, and black. And the last two sections really pulled together, you know, what the different colors stand for metaphorically underneath that kind of direct and literal understanding of it. It took it to a much deeper level. And I just really, like, I think about this book pretty often now that I've finished it, just because each section had a moment where I was like, oh, that's why it's called chapter read or whatever. Just truly a great book. I highly recommend it and I end up giving it four out of five stars. And with that, I am going to wrap this vlog up. We are currently in the middle of moving as you can see. So I am going to go, but thank you all so much for watching. I really had a great time reading these pandemic books and just kind of living in the, these dystopian worlds that were all very different and either kind of a dystopian world or like a historical fiction during an epidemic. I just really, really enjoyed it. I read three different styles of books which I thought was really interesting. We had, you know, The Pull of the Stars, which is a historical fiction um, pandemic. We had After the Flood, which was kind of a climate story, a climate dystopia. And then I read The Electric Kingdom, which was a young adult sci-fi dystopian novel. So ultimately very different books and just an all around fantastic reading vlog. I truly loved every single book I read for this vlog. So thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, share this video with anyone you think would enjoy it, and I will see you next time. Bye, friends.